there's not a lot that I have to explain here at the start. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. What we're going to be doing here is cutting clips. Now, you can either cut the beginning off, you can cut the end off, or you could take a clip that's already there and maybe cut it into two different sections because you want to add something in between there. So we'll just jump right over into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to do all of this. So jumping over to DaVinci Resolve, I currently have a couple of clips here on my timeline. And the first one we're going to go over is what is referred to as a three-point edit. This is kind of like a traditional way of editing where we first go in and we pick a clip in which we want to add to our project and we would then pick the location that we want that to be. So let's have it right here in the middle. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pick the portion of the clip that we want to use. So look, let's say we want it to be right here. So we don't wanna use this beginning, but we want the clip to start right there. So we click this little button here to make an endpoint, right? And you can use I and O for obviously in and out. Uh, and then we would play through here until we got something that we wanted. So maybe right as he wipes his face, is where I, we, I, we want it to end. So now we have this portion. Now we can bring this down a couple different ways. We could just drop it right down there on the timeline and our clip is going to start right where we previously had it. We could also uh, drag this over and we have a couple of different options over here on ways to add if we wanted to append it to the end. Our playhead doesn't matter where it's at. It'll automatically add it to the end there. Uh, or we could have it go insert, which will put it right in between those two clips and slide the other clip out. And so that's going to be our first way of editing, which is referred to as a three point edit. We're cutting off the beginning and end and then inserting it where we want to using the overlay that we were using there. Now, if we have something on the timeline and we want to make a cut, well, we could go into the blade tool by hitting B and it'll turn on our blade tool. Now our playhead, or excuse me, our mouse cursor, as we scroll through here, we can see uh, the point portion in which where our mouse cursor is. So when we click, it would then cut, right? So that's one way of going about doing this is we could just come in and we could cut and then we could hit A to go back to our normal uh, tool. Uh, that's another way of doing it, but there are uh, a couple of easier ways of doing this as well. And so like if we were watching this and say we wanna cut right here, we could go, okay, we cut there and we cut there. So now we're using the playhead as the razor. So this is gonna be slightly different. So where before we would hit B, to do our cut or to go into the blade tool to do our cut here, we're gonna be holding down control or command and then we're getting to be uh, hitting B. So we're gonna hold down control or command and then hit B to be able to cut where our playhead is. So the other thing to pay attention here is when we have multiple clips stacked up and we have one of them selected and we wanna use this uh, cutting tool where we are cutting with the playhead. So for instance, if we have nothing selected and we were to play this through, when we would hit our command to cut, just like that, uh, it's automatically going to cut all of the clips. But let's say we were to just have this one selected. As we play through here and we hit that, we're seeing that we're only cutting that one clip that we had selected there. So those are different options there. Uh, the other thing that I want to quickly show you here is let's say we had this particular clip here and we want it to maybe cut off the end here when he right before he looks back. So there's you know, all the options that we had before we could hit the B, come back over to here, we could then take this, delete that, then delete the space, right? Or we could click here and do a ripple delete, which brings it back by hitting the delete key. Uh, the other thing that we can do here is instead of doing any of those options, currently we don't have a cut here. If we were to bring our playhead here, what we could do is we could ripple to playhead, uh, we could we could ripple the start or the end, right? And so to do that, all we would, we would be doing that, right? And so what that's doing is it's just cutting all of this off here and it's just sliding this clip over so we don't have to deal with the spaces. If we wanted to go the other way, where this is where we want the clip to start, but we wanna remove all of this portion of the clip, we can do that as well. So the, the way in which that we would do this, it's control or command, and then we're gonna hold down shift, and then it's the left or the right bracket, depending on if you want it to be before the playhead or after the playhead. Uh, sometimes I recommend it in the past to change these commands. So uh, you, when, you start, when you open up the keyboard customizer here, you just have to click the buttons that, you're, that we're holding. So we're holding down both of these, and we can see our bracket left is the start to playhead, so that's going to cut everything and make that the new starting point, or we have the end to playhead. So uh, you could make any of your other keys, like I made uh, F1, F2, F3, so start to playhead, normal cut, and then end to playhead, right? So uh, depending on where my mouse cursor was, 
or excuse me, where my playhead was, I could hit F1 to roll it to the beginning, right? To cut all of the beginning off. I could hit F2 to slice it right there, or I could hit F3 to delete from there or cut it from there and delete all of the rest of that clip. So you have a couple of different options and you can go in and change these. You would just click on it and then the command that you would want to, to do, you would just uh, write in there. And so that's pretty much everything for keyboard shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve. We're obviously going to be using these a lot. So remembering the keyboard shortcuts is kind of critical. Uh, you do have the ability to click the razor tool there and use that as an option. Some people do that. Uh, if you are going to be doing a lot of editing, understanding these keyboard shortcuts is definitely going to save you a lot of time, as well as the different modifiers there that will save you a lot of time as well. And since now you know what those commands are, you could make your own keyboard shortcuts if that's something that you're interested in, but at least now you know what the defaults are, uh, you know, coming right out of DaVinci Resolve. But that's pretty much everything that I was going to talk about here. I do on my website have a bunch of free titles. If that's something of interest, there is a link in the description for that. But with that being said, I am out of here. My name's Jared. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next one. Peace.